good morning. Sorry, I'm a little late. I did the bath before I came on. <laughs> so, good morning, Christine. Happy Monday. Happy spring. Ah, how awesome is that? Oh my gosh. I swear, like initially after the spring forward, I'm always like a little extra tired. Good morning, Rebecca. And, uh, but I don't know, it's like a little bit of this renewed energy, right? Like you want to get up and outside. Oh my God, we had one day, I think it was Friday. It was like in the 70s. I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing, right? Just amazing. I'm so looking forward to this full on spring and warmer temperatures and being outside. So excited about that. So I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. For those of you joining us for the first time, I'm Dr. Deisha Phillip, cardiologist who deals with all matters of the heart and a Chopra Center certified uh, med primordial sound meditation teacher, founder of the Path to Meditation Mastery, heart math practitioner and student of Raja Yoga Meditation through the World Spiritual University. And we are here and founder of Meditation for Female Physicians Facebook group. And we meet here Monday through Friday, 7 to 7.30 a.m. Eastern to start off the day with a charged battery for our souls and to have a healthy breakfast for our mind, spirits, and bodies in that way. Um, you know, just as we, I preach in the office and many of my fellow physician sisters talk about diet and lifestyle and healthy lifestyle in the office with our patients, it's so important that we're following what we preach, of course, but also that we are feeding our minds and our hearts with a healthy breakfast so we can have a healthy life that is authentic to who we are. So I am going to start off with March 21st. We always do a little reading. Good morning, Facebook user. Good morning, Amy. I see you there too. Awesome. So today's message, when I generate kind and optimistic thoughts, my life begins to flow. So this is why we meet here. So when I generate kind and optimistic thoughts, my life begins to flow. Do you ever feel like your life is stuck? Right? Contracted, not moving forward, just spinning in circles of negativity. Right? I know I've been there. I know all of you have been there. I know every single one of us has felt that way. And we were like in a rut, can't get ourselves out of it. Right? And, you know, I always teach, you know, 80 to 90, I mean, we have 80 to 90,000 thoughts spinning in our heads every single day. And 90% of them are the same thought. And for some strange reason, for most of us, that thought tends to be a negative thought. And it sucks the life out of us. <laughs> it does. It makes us feel stuck. It makes us feel contracted. It makes us, you know, it gives us all these false ideas of, why life sucks. I almost remember being in high school, you know, being like, yeah, life sucks, life sucks, blah, blah, blah. Really? Really? Like, I had no idea. It was like almost like cool to say that. <laughs> but now I know better, right? I, I didn't know anything about a gratitude practice back then, of course. In fact, I don't think I learned anything about a gratitude practice until like in the last 10 years. And so it's so, so, so important. When I generate kind and optimistic thoughts, my life begins to flow. So once we wake up and realize that the negative thoughts that are spinning in our heads are not serving us and that we can actually choose a better feeling thought, it like takes the foot off the brake and now we can go. Now we start moving a little bit. Now we're like, wait a second, is there anything I can be grateful for today? Yeah, I'm actually grateful that I have a roof over my head. Uh, yeah, I'm grateful that I have this body to use and, and I can see through my eyes. Maybe I can't see without my glasses, but I have glasses. I can see with my glasses. Um, so grateful for that, right? I can 
I have, I had a bed that I slept in. I'm so grateful for that. We can be grateful for anything. And then once you start flooding yourself with gratitude, bam, the next thing you notice, hmm, maybe life doesn't suck. Maybe life's actually pretty darn good. And we have a new life and life begins to flow. So awesome. Let me see, what's our law of today? Law of the day is giving and receiving. All right, I'll go over it real quick. So those for those of us who have been through the path to meditation mastery and have um, we've gone through the seven spiritual laws of yoga taught by Deepak Chopra, every day of the week has a spiritual law. So Monday's law is the law of giving and receiving. Today, bring everyone you encounter a gift, a compliment, or a flower. Gratefully receive gifts. Keep wealth circulating by giving and receiving care, affection, appreciation, and love. So as we give care, affection, appreciation, and love, it comes back to us. But the most important person to give that to first thing in the morning is you right we have to fill ourselves up with that first and then from a full well we can start to get all right matt march 21st ask and it is given as you consciously consider the way you feel you will get better and better at directing the source energy and you will become a disciplined and joyous, deliberate creator. With practice, you will be able to achieve a focused control of this creative energy. And like the skilled sculptor, you will take delight in the molding of this energy that creates worlds and direct it toward your individual creative endeavors. I'm actually going to read the one from yesterday because I think that was a really good one. Let me share that with you too. Hold on. Yeah, this is important to understand. So the Ask It is, for those of you who don't know, the Ask and It Is Giving calendar is from Abraham Hicks and the Law of Attraction. And this is law, okay? law of basically what you're putting out there, the energy of what you're putting out there comes back to you and determines the quality of your life. Now, you know, I can say that very flippantly and be like, yeah, that's what it is, easy peasy, right? But it takes time to really think about it and to practice it and to see its impact on your life. And if you don't know about it, you can't do anything with it. But once you know about it and you start really using it and practicing it, holy cow, totally new life emerges for you. Okay. So that's why we kind of go through it. I mean, I've been reading this calendar. You'll, you can go back on YouTube, look at the daily directions from Disha. I've been doing this since like 2020, right? Since the pandemic, I think I started reading this. Um, and you know, sometimes I post them on my Facebook group too, right? <laughs> like on my, on my uh, personal page, right? Just because it's like, as I teach you, it reinforces it for me. And that's why we're here too, right? So, okay. So March 20th, ask and it is given. We refer to the non-physical you as your inner being or your source or your soul, right? The non-physical you, not this body, right? The non-physical you are a pure, peaceful soul, right? So we refer to the non-physical you as your inner being, right? And World Spiritual University, we call it the soul, right? Or your source with a capital S. It is not important what you call that source of energy or life force. Chi, some people call it chi, right? But it is important that you are consciously aware of when you are allowing a full connection to it and when you are restricting it in some way. 
and your emotions are your constant indicators of your degree of allowing or resisting that connection. So I keep saying I'm going to be doing a class on this for the in the um, uh, meditation for female physicians class about really trying, really being able to tell the difference between your personal, really, this is your authentic self. Who are you authentically, right? Your authentic self and your conditioned self is the one that feels contracted, right? So here, when you are allowing, when you're in connection with source, with your true soul identity, you feel an expansiveness, right? You feel love. And when you are not connected to that, you have you have disconnected from that. You are in a contracted state and you feel stuck. Okay. So that's important to understand. And our feelings and emotions help us tune in to where we are with that. Okay. All right. Today's Monday. I should have woken them up, but we're going to do the power of love cards today. <laughs> I shall pick them. Usually I have my daughter, one of my girls, pick it, but they're not up yet. I feel like I should scream. I don't want to wake up, but anyways, it's all good. Let's see what our power of love cards are saying to us today. <laughs> what is it that we need to hear? We need to hear this, everyone. I think we've heard it now like every week for the last three weeks. Self-love. You realize that love of self is necessary to love another. All right. This is coming to us again. I did a full shuffle. That means somebody, maybe myself and you, whoever's hearing this, needs to hear this again. And if it's the first time you're hearing it, listen up. This message is for you. As the old saying goes, you can't love somebody until you can't love somebody else until you love yourself. It's true. The most important goal you can achieve in this physical dimension is that of loving yourself unconditionally. And it's a tough one. You are the very person who knows your dark secrets, faults, and shortcomings the best. It's easy to see the good in other people because you don't know anyone but yourself inside and out. Do you really think that you are the only person you know who is not worthy of your love? Your soul is perfect. Your human shell is imperfect. And so is everyone else's. The quality of love you give out is only as good as the quality of love you have for yourself. So stop shortchanging the world by not loving yourself with the same intensity you do others. You've made mistakes, but you've learned from them. That's what progress and spiritual evolution are all about don't need to punish yourself anymore, okay? Love your weaknesses as much as your strengths because they are your teachers. You know, I drink that green tea, the, yo the yogi blueberry bliss green tea, and it has like little messages on the, on the tea bag. And one of the messages is it's okay that you failed, at least you had the courage to try, right? It's okay that we weren't 
perfect in whatever it was that we tried to do. That maybe we're not a perfect parent. Maybe we're not a perfect friend. Maybe we're not a perfect sibling. Maybe we're not a perfect whatever. Okay. Those are, those are all the roles that we're playing in this lifetime. Okay. We all play different roles on this stage that we're in. Okay. The stage of life. There's this whole drama going on and we're all playing all these different roles. And it's our soul that is using this body to play these roles. Okay. And it's so important that we recognize that the true nature of our authentic self is love, is heart-centeredness. That is our truth. Whenever we made a mistake or we weren't perfect in those ways, we just forgot who we really were. And that's the human condition. It's okay. Okay. So love yourself up. All the messiness, right? Have your mess be your message. We have learned from our mistakes. We have learned from those times that we weren't perfect. And when we can embrace that about ourselves, we can embrace that in others. We're all doing the best that we can with the tools that we have. And we're always trying to do better. And that's what's beautiful, right? So it's okay. Because you're so fog, right? And now let's get comfortable. It's time to meditate. And let's, get, let's connect with that heart-centered self, okay? Get comfortable wherever you are sitting. Close your eyes. And visualize your heart in the center of your chest with two nostrils, one in the right ventricle, one on the left. Now let's go ahead and take a deep breath into your heart. Breathe out of your heart. Breathe into your heart and really make an earnest effort to conjure up those feelings of love, joy, peace, breathe out of your heart. Breathe normally. And we'll begin by asking ourselves four soul questions. Question one. Who am I? Who am I? Just be. Second question. What do I want? What is my deepest desire? Allow anything at all to come to you in the form of a sensation, image, feeling, or thought.
Third question. What is my purpose? How can I serve myself and others? Allow anything at all to come to you in the form of a sensation, image, feeling, or thought. Fourth question. What am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? Allow anything at all to come to you in the form of a sensation, image, feeling, or thought. Now silently repeat the following sentence. I am and your first and last name. Now drop your last name and silently repeat I am and your first name. Now drop your first name and silently repeat I am I am, I am. And we'll switch that to the vibration of I am, which is a hum, a hum, a hum. And now we'll begin the repetition of our mantra. So for those of you who already uh, have your personalized primordial sound meditation mantra, go ahead and start repeating that now. For everyone else, we'll use the mantra, so hum. So we'll silently repeat, so hum, so hum, so hum. Please continue repeating your mantra. I will keep the time and I'll let you know when it's time to stop. Enjoy your meditation.
Please keep your eyes closed and stop repeating your mantra and rest. Rest in existence. Rest in awareness. Rest in consciousness. Just rest. And as we rest, I'll pronounce four intentions. Just repeat them silently and release them into being. Joyful, energetic body. Joyful, energetic body. Loving, compassionate heart. Loving, compassionate heart. Reflective, alert mind. Reflective, alert mind. And lightness of being. Lightness of being. Continue to rest. And when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes, wiggle your fingers and toes, give yourself a big stretch. And you can bring your palms to heart center and give yourself a little bow of gratitude for bringing yourself here today to recharge, to fill up with the truth and reconnect with a little bit of self-love. And from this place of love, Let's give a blast of that love and light energy out to all of our family, our friends, our community, our city, our state, our country, to all the countries on this planet, to every single brother and sister soul on this planet. From there, let's give a blast of that energy out into the universe. And then from there, it gets boomeranged right back to us. I'll say namaste, the divine light in me sees and honors the divine light in you. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. Sending you love. Mwah.